So let me try and run this version of the code with malloc and with the word b, which remember caused a problem last time. So we initialize word to b, we call our function. This time, this word uh, lower is a pointer to character. And when we call this malloc function, we are requesting enough memory to store four characters. And in this case, that request was granted, which means we got a valid base address. And that base address is being stored in this pointer variable, which is why Python Tutor is visualizing this for us as this arrow. Remember again, there are no arrows actually in memory. But we should write better code. As our friend said, what if this request is denied? And what about freeing that memory? So the first way we're going to write better code is to actually hash include our standard library. And then this helper function malloc will be defined. Now the malloc function takes this one argument, which is however many bytes we want. But it's a very good habit to add a little bit more detail to this argument. In this particular case, we want to allocate an array of characters, which is why we are capturing whatever malloc returns, whatever base address malloc returns in a car star variable. You can use a malloc to allocate enough space to store an array of integers or an array of doubles. And each one of these types has a different size for each car or int or double. So a very good habit is to take the amount of items you would like, in this case characters, and multiply it with the size of that data type. In this case, that is size of character. Now, it turns out that on most systems, the size of a single character is 1. So in this particular case, it is unnecessary to do this additional level of detail. But it's a good habit to write code like this. In general, if you would like to use malloc to create an array of ints or doubles, then you would modify this to be size of int or size of double. So there's this built-in size of operator, although it looks like a function, which will actually tell you how big that particular data type is on your system. Remember, in C, some of these types differ from system to system in terms of how big they are. That's why code like this is useful to write. Another small stylistic change I will make here is this malloc function returns an address. And in this case, as we have said, we want to interpret that as the base address of an array of characters. In general, this could be of some other type. So I'm going to explicitly typecast this return address as car star. This is more for us humans as a reminder that this address is to be treated as a car star. It's not absolutely necessary, your code will compile, but again, it's good style. Something that really is necessary is after you have captured this address into word lower, is to check if the operating system agreed to your request or denied your request. And the way the operating system will signal to you that it denied your request is it will return a special address called null. So here we will write if this word lower really is equal to null, then we must handle that special case. Now what should this to end lower function return if it is unable to create enough memory to make a copy of the given word? Well, it's probably a good thing to ask our client, what is it that they want? This is not a question 
we think about as Python programmers. As Python programmers, we merrily wrote word is equal to word dot lower and we relied on the fact that there was enough memory to handle that particular situation. But if that particular request for more memory failed in Python, our Python code would crash. In this case, as a C programmer, I have a little bit more fine-grained control. I can decide what to do over here. So let us say our client said, well, in that case, just, just give me the word as it is. I mean, you weren't able to convert it. Just don't crash my program. Just, just give me the same word. So we will return, in this case, the given word. Now, that handles the situation where the request for memory was denied. If the request was accepted, this if condition would not be true, and we would immediately skip to line 14, in which case we would go ahead and do what we did over here. But that memory that we allocated, who is going to free it up? As C programmers, it is our responsibility to free up that memory. So when that value is returned, we must remember it and manually free it up. Here's what that would look like. So here we would say something like car star, um, let us call it the Indian lowercase version, is whatever this function returned. Okay, we capture it in a variable. Now we use int lower over here. And finally, before we return from main, we free up that int lower. So every malloc should have a corresponding free. It's possible that the free happens in a different function to the malloc. The malloc in this case is in our helper function to int lower and free is happening in main. So this code is much better. But if you try running it on one of the words for which the translation exists, for example this, it will fail why it fails and how to deal with that failure I want you to think about. Feel free to copy paste this entire code into a generative AI tool like ChatGPT and ask it first if it can see why it might fail and then ask it for a fix. Try that fix and see if you believe it.